In this video, my friend Laura and I are going to talk about love languages. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to another video from Ling Ling. Today I am here with my friend Laura. Hi everyone, my name is Laura. I'm from Germany, married to a guy from Inner Mongolia, and I run the blog Our Chinese Wedding. Yes, check it out, links below. This video is another AMWF advice video, and I have asked Laura to help me answer one of you guys' questions. And also, remember if you have something you want to know about these kind of relationships, Asian, male, white, female relationships, then send me an email on info at lenaround.com or find me on social media, Lena Round, Instagram and Facebook. Yes, and we will do our best to answer your question. Yes. yes. <laughs> What is today's question? We got a message, or I got a message a little while ago from a girl. She texted me, uh, watch this video series. I guess it's the AMWF video series. And gosh, I love them. Keep them coming. Thank you. <laughs> that makes me happy. I went to stay with my fiance's family this past summer and I had a lot of overwhelming crying moments. His family speaks Liuzhou dialect along with drunk language. I'm still learning Mandarin, a beginner, and I wasn't sure how to express to him the isolating feeling. How can I overcome this? I try to learn the dialect, but no one will teach me or they tell me it's too hard. To me, that's the worst thing you can tell someone in my situation. What do you think about this? Any advice? Thank you again for your videos. Always an encouragement. Also, we only communicate in Chinese and a little English because my Mandarin is better than his English. Yeah, right. Oh, that's so Liu Jiu dialect and drum language. Never heard about that before. That's not an easy. Um, that's not an easy question to begin with. No. <laughs> but um, yeah, I was looking into the drum a little bit after you told us about that, because um, I thought I can just be like, oh, it's not worth it. <laughs> It's just such a small <laughs> amount of the population. Whatever. Turns out 18 million Zhuang people are living in China and other areas of the world. So that's already quite a few people right there. <laughs> quite <laughs> it's a few. the biggest minority in China. I was not aware of it. I didn't know that. No. Um, fascinating. I mean, I love minority culture and I love learning languages. Mm. However, <laughs> here's the but. <butt>. However, <laughs> I think we both agree on this maybe that you might want to focus on Mandarin for now. Um, yeah. There are a couple of reasons. I'm just going to give you one. <laughs> you don't know the drama that's going on right now with your potential family in law. <laughs> If you learn the language, you'll understand everything that's going on. And that might sound a little bit silly, but when people say ignorance is bliss, sometimes I tend to agree. <laughs> sometimes it's true. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it is true. But also, is it going to be worth it? I mean, mm. I don't know. What do you think? You visited, or the girl, which shouldn't say you, it's not all of you guys, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> the girl who texted me, she said she just visited the family during the summer vacation. So to me, I was thinking, well, okay, it's not fun to feel isolated but on the other hand if you're only staying there for a month once a year then or like twice a year then bring a book bring your phone you know like just do your own thing and try to survive it mm -hmm. and then when you go back to where you're staying with your boyfriend or fiance then keep learning Mandarin like to me Mandarin is very important it takes a, a lot of time to learn a new language and Chinese languages are not easy and you're already, she is already studying Mandarin. She just mentioned she's a beginner. Mm -hmm. And I remember how hard it was just to like get from beginner to okay fluent. Mm -hmm. And you're in a, she's in a, why do I say you? <laughs> she is in a relationship. She's in a relationship with this guy and they have to make it work and he doesn't speak English. So I feel like learning Mandarin is like number one priority. And if you start mixing those other different languages, you're gonna be like so confused. It is, yeah, no, that's definitely Ooh. too much. So, and with Mandarin, you'll get further because you, you can go all far. over China, right? And sure. even outside of China. I mean, from my personal perspective, I actually um, I have a grandmom 
um, like a Chinese grandmom, and she is from um, that home originally, so she doesn't actually speak the Inner Mongolian kind of um, accent, but she's got a very heavy accent that I really, really struggle with. Mm. And what I will tell you is, here's my tip, mm. you have to train your boyfriend to be your interpreter. Mm. It's a bit of work, like me and my husband, so we're still working on that. Like I get, I have to get angry with him every now and then, and I'd be like, do not leave the room, you need to tell me what he's saying, because I can't do this. But that's probably the best idea, is that you make sure that he's around and he helps you with communication. And mm. that doesn't come natural, it doesn't come naturally, especially like, if, if he's used to you speaking Chinese to him sure. um, so that will take a bit of time but that would be my suggestion actually is that or you just make yeah. sure yeah. it's tiring for him but you know if he wants you to be around his family mm. and I do understand what you say what you're saying when you feel quite isolated it is quite frustrating to not know what's going on it's, it's not fun and and she also mentioned that she you know had these like breakdown moments just be like I can't deal with this anymore but I just want to say it's okay to be emotional first, number one. It's totally fair. It's totally okay to be emotional in front of your fiance. And I can give a little more information and say she later on mentioned that, you know, he was very understanding and he was trying to make it easier for her. Mm. But again, like, I just don't, I don't feel like it's important to learn that, like, it might, you know, make the family happy, but it's like, it really depends how often you go and visit them. I feel like if you're thinking about moving into the countryside and stay in the village, yes, then yes, yes. get started, <laughs> but I'm like, just do that when you get there then. Yes, yeah, if you're, if you're there, if you're actually living with them in, in the same house, you probably won't have much choice at no, the end of the day. No, just the listen and then um, copy. <laughs> but, if, but if most of your life is away from them, then... Mm. I mean, as much as it pains me, because I love languages, like I said, but... Meh. At the end of the day, <laughs> there's only so much you can do with your life, and Mandarin yeah. is going to get you further. Yeah. yeah, and it will take up all of your time. Mm -hmm. So I would, I would definitely say that too. And just, just bring some things that can keep you, um, you know, entertained. If everyone is Occupied. like just having a party, <laughs> just sitting there like, what is our oh, talk about? <laughs> yeah, but I actually really like your advice. Just tell the boyfriend to, to uh, like translate more. You know, especially if they're looking at you, because I feel like people, if, if I don't understand, that's one the reasons actually why I learned Chinese in the first place. I was like, people looking at me, I don't know what's going on, I hate that I can't reply. Like, yeah. I'm too impatient to make other people reply for me. Mm. If they really are looking at you, very often it's just in our head, but if they do it a lot, yeah. then, you know, make your boyfriend help translate. Mm. Yeah, that's probably best strategy at this yeah, point. <laughs> yeah, and then ever, like, if your mother-in-law, she suggests that, or if she just, you know, moves in, because if you guys get married and have a child, she probably moving. Could, could happen. Could happen. Could happen. <laughs> just, just warning here. Just a little, you know, mentioning. Um, and then it might be a good idea to learn the dialect. But then again, I don't remember if she mentioned if the mother-in-law she speaks or understands Mandarin. If she understands Mandarin, yeah, that was my fine. question because a lot yeah. of the people in these areas do tend to speak Mandarin or at mm. least Cantonese. She probably speaks Liuzhou dialect as well. Oh yeah. Which dialects are just as bad? I Ooh. mean, if you look at like Shanghai, Hangzhou dialect, you're Ooh. lost. You know, yeah. I mean, I was learning Chinese for years. We go there and we're just like, what is going on? Yeah. There are there are so many different variations, and and it's so fascinating. But 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 stick to Mandarin. Yeah. For as sure. non-natives, we need to start slowly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> start slowly. I tell him to like learn. She said her family also speaks some Spanish her own family so you know after he starts learning English just just try to push Spanish on him if he I says you should Spanish. learn the drunk <laughs> language yeah be like you say drunk to me I say Spanish to you boy and then that's what we're gonna do yeah mm. there that's you go. a multinational household I like that it. very like much no, probably discuss what to teach your child before you get a child. Ooh, a drunk Spanish speaking child. And I English like and that. Mandarin and Cantonese. I think actually her boyfriend speaks Cantonese too. He probably would, yeah. Yeah. I like Cantonese. <laughs> you could learn Cantonese if you like. <laughs> Dressing her out now. <laughs> Sorry. This is like, oh, this is like the phone. oh my god. <laughs> It's like, oh my god, this advice is like the worst ever. <laughs> How about five more languages? <laughs> Stick to Mandarin. Mandarin. Stick to Mandarin. Stick to the love language you have with your fiance and ask him to translate if you really feel like you need it. Yes. Yes. Good luck. 
Yes. <laughs> that was all for this video. Thank you very much for listening. Please let us know in the comments below what you think she should do. How many languages you think she should study? <laughs> all of them. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> it all depends on future and where you want to go, what you want to do. So yeah, thank you very much to Laura for, for having me, joining <laughs> the conversation, and uh, yeah, give us a thumbs up. Follow on social media and Patreon, Lena around, and then we'll see you again very, very soon. Lingling and Laura Asad. See ya and ta-jian. Bye-bye. Ta-jian, bye-bye.